am super excited about the next two speakers for two reasons. Like we heard a lot of things about Facebook. You know, how do you build a brand? You know, how do you manage a crisis on Facebook? Well, today we have two experts from Google to tell us how do you use the Google products to brand your e-commerce. So I want you to give a really big round of applause to Peter Trendafiwov and Alex Bozhinov from Dublin, Google. Welcome on stage. Welcome. All right. Hi, everyone. I hope you had an enjoyable lunch. Today, I'm here with my colleague, Alex, and we're going to present about building brands for online success with Google. Now, today's agenda is going to take us through three separate points. First, I'm going to introduce some practical tips on online consumer trends. Thereafter, Alex is going to come to the stage, introducing you to what we at Google call micro moments. And towards the end of the presentation, we would move to our case studies. This will illustrate what we've talked about. Now, before we begin, I would like you to think about the business owner that you know. Think of someone who is really passionate about what they're doing. This could be your local florist, for example, or it could be the owner of your favorite restaurant. It could be even yourself in the case that you're an e-commerce owner. Now, for all these people, online has become crucial. Even if their context is mostly offline, just as I introduced with the two examples. Imagine the local florist who is starting to realize that he has to do online deliveries. They really need to understand that they have to have a powerful website, but they also have to understand that they don't need to bundle a lot of features on this website. People might simply be interested in what flowers do you have? When can you deliver? How much is it going to cost? These are the things. Consider again the business owner, the owner of the restaurant that I spoke about. This person might have just started to use the newest app for booking tables. But in the same time, he might not even have an online website. He's still one person who is working offline, but needs to understand online consumer behaviors. However, understanding people online, understanding how they think and how they behave, is a cumbersome task. It's, it's not something that you can just think about and have an epiphany, say, Eureka, I understand my consumers. You actually have to take a long process. You have to invest a lot of resources into understanding them. Now, these two owners that I just introduced, they might not necessarily have these resources. They're actually interested in something much more important, running their business. In this scenario, and in many others, Google is the, in the unique position to be the partner for these people. We are in the unique position to actually help these people understand online consumer behaviors. Consider this. By the time you read this sentence, people around the world will have asked Google about 500,000 questions. That's a wow, that's a lot of information, and it's pretty cool. But what does it actually tell us? This tells us that Google and YouTube have become the largest databases on consumer behaviors. They're actually giving us insights into aggregated data about what people want, what their emotions are, what their feelings are, and most importantly, what their passions are, because through their passions, we can actually unlock their purchase behaviors. Now, what this actually also gives us is a great insight into what people really want to do online. In terms of this, we're getting visibility into humanity's collective consciousness. And we have never had this visibility. We were never able, to this extent, to collect data so fast to search a large scale. Google and YouTube are pioneers in this. Now, data is no longer the problem. The problem is how do we take this data and aggregate it? How do we make it understandable for business owners? Because the florist doesn't care how many people have searched. They care what can they do with this information. We need to actually take the data and crunch it, make it, turn it into an insight. We need to unveil what are the insights behind these behaviors, behind a, a search. What are the insights behind somebody searching, then going on a website, coming back to search? We need to understand this whole trend. For this, there is a whole process. It's not just a one stop. We don't just sit there in our Google office thinking, oh, I have an insight about consumer behavior. We actually collect all these clues, opinions, and then we create hypotheses around them in order to prove or disprove them. 
Through this, we can actually understand trends. We can see interconnections, and therefore we can present them in a way of insights. This way, and only this way, can people reach strategies. Strategies that are actually good. Strategies that are actually implementable. Only these strategies, and only strategies that are based on actionable insights, can give us the right way of understanding how we can bring, build our brand, how we can create an idea, or how we could probably create our business plan, if, uh, sorry, our media plans for those of you who might be in the journalist sector, excuse me. Thinking about the right solutions and the right strategies is good, but they're only unlocked by insights, and only through insights that are novel, that are credible and actionable. Insights that are obvious, like if I tell you an insight right now, you would be, oh, that's, that's obvious, that's, that's super clear to me. But at the same time, they're a bit unexpected, so you had some doubts about them. And now with this thing, that with this insight that you're presented, you actually should be asking yourself, so what? What am, what am I supposed to do with this information? How is this applicable for my business? Only if you're asking yourself this question, can you actually do something about it afterwards? Because an insight that doesn't answer this question is not an actionable insight. Throughout the years, Google has worked in many different ways and created many different insight tools. I'm gonna give you a moment just for those of you who wanna write most of them down, because I'm not gonna focus on all of them. But the point here that I want to bring across is different tools can serve different needs. Somebody in the audience might be interested in understanding how their brand can be lifted. Then they would use the brand lift uh, product of Google. However, another person might be interested in consumer behaviors. Then they would focus only on the left side of this table. At the same time, there are ways of aggregating data through, for example, Google Correlate. This is a tool where you search for a search term, and Google actually tells you what other terms are searched in conjunction with this. Things that you can't really anticipate, you can only guess them, and that's not really practicable. Now, the zeitgeist, on the other hand, is something that gives you a very, very holistic approach of what people search in the world. And that's probably not something that many of you would be interested in. You might be interested in specific categories or in the specific consumer behaviors. So let's focus on these two. Google Trends, for those of you who haven't used it, is a free tool where you can check what, search, what searches people are doing. This would mean that, for example, for the local florist, he might be guessing from the offline behavior of people that they come to his store for a few, a few reasons, a few events over the year. They come for Valentine's Day, or they might be coming for birthdays, they might be coming for Mother's Day. But however, you can never anticipate when a birthday is, you know, so you have to always be there offline. However, if he goes on Google Trends, he might actually uncover some trends. He might find that in Bulgaria, for some reason, whatever organic reason, people are searching for flowers at specific points of time. Then this person will know that he has to be there at these specific moments, otherwise he's losing business. Through this, Google Trends can really provide you also with actual trends in search. You can actually anticipate and then do actions. You can do strategies. For example, you can advertise or you might implement a better SEO strategy. I know the next session, if I'm not mistaken, is about that. But this is what Google Trends is about. The consumer barometer, on the other hand, I don't know, I, I just want to check how many of you have used it or have heard about it. All right, that's nice, only a few hands. Yeah, the consumer barometer is something pretty cool. You can check it yourself after the presentation. It's at consumerbarometer.com, I just don't want to forget about it. It's a free tool, and it gives you really, really actionable insights. It gives you an understanding of how people use the internet for shopping, viewing content, or just doing their purchasing research. This is incredible because you can take the raw data and analyze it yourself if you're interested in this. Or you could also use the tool itself. It has a graph builder. And then use these graphs. They're free. You can use them in your presentations when you're trying to persuade the other people on your team to do a business decision. Or if you're a one-man team, you can just take them and understand your customer without having to guess what they're doing. Let me give you some idea of 
what you could use this for. For example, if you're interested in what people check, where do people check when they're searching for a new product? That's not surprising. I mean, I'm not trying to sell Google here. It's, uh, it's obvious everybody checks the search engine. But the more interesting things are, for example, the online research on brand websites, the online research on retailer websites. These are places where you need to be. Your brand needs to be set there. That means you have to have a strong brand website, or you might have to have a strong presence in a retailer's website if you're selling a product. This means that not only should your website be optimized on Google, you have to understand all the other places and how much, how much time, how much money should you invest in those. You no longer need to guess. You can just go on the consumer barometer. Data is available about Bulgaria, by the way, and this is Bulgarian data. So another thing that you might have heard about, there are so many rumors, mobile is becoming big, but what's the data that's backing this up? How are we, what are we doing, what are we researching in order to understand what consumers are checking and where are they checking it? There you go. Now you can understand that, for example, computers, obviously when we buy a computer we don't throw it away when we buy a smartphone. So the computer trends are remaining quite steady, whereas smartphone trends, for some reason, probably because of the short life cycle, are increasing in the last years. As well, if you were wondering about tablets, you could see here that this trend is also rising, but at a, lot, at a much uh, smaller scale. But now, how do we understand what this means for us? Why are we, I mean, in itself, the fact that people buy more smartphones doesn't mean practically anything. It means good things for the retailers or the brands who are selling smartphones. But for us as business owners, they're, they're nothing. Through data like this, we can understand that people might search across devices. People might, might start the journey at their desktop, continue later in the metro or in the underground on their smartphone. They might even convert later during that day on, while they're watching TV on their tablet. And you need to know this, you need to understand this, so you can take an educated decision when you decide to do a mobile version of your website. And you need to understand how much traffic is gonna come to that mobile version. Otherwise, your decision is a guess. You're just, everybody's doing it. I need to do it as well. For example, another example, by the way, which is quite interesting in this, and you can also check that on Think with Google, the tool that I showed previously, this one is about millennials. Millennials are an increasingly popular group and if your business in some way serves millennials, I really encourage you to check the consumer barometer. It has great insights that are predefined for you about millennials in Bulgaria. Now, this has taken Google in the past years from being just a platform to becoming a consultative partner. It has taken us from a company that just provides data and is a knowledgeable holder of data to a company that actually crunches this data and puts it forward for its consumers and for the brand owners as insights. In addition to that, we no longer just answer questions. Now we are focusing towards asking the right questions, and these are the questions that the brand owners need to be asked. In terms of this, it, an interesting statistic is that quite a huge amount of people are searching on the search engine for local businesses. However, consider this, you really need to understand that people express their behavior in a connection between intent and context. Now keep this in mind for the next part of the presentation with Alex. Thanks, Peter. Right, so I know we're time constrained, but still at Google we cherish when everybody takes part in the presentation. That's why I'm gonna ask you all to stand up from your seats. Everyone is laid back after lunch, you know, feeling comfortable, no one's asking them questions. Please stand up, all right? So now you did a great job, you know. You survived half of the day and you're still here. So I'd like you to give a high five to two people next to you and say bravo, all right? Bravo. All right, don't just sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Do not sit down. All right, great. Listen up. So one more thing. Now each one of us starts scratching their hands like this, all right? Okay, on the count of three, everyone points here and says, pop, all right? So we do this with our hands, okay? One, two, three, pop! Nice, okay, take your seats. All right, so we've done something all together and I would like uh, the same way to move into the world of micro moments. Uh, micro moments are 
a very interesting topic because uh, it all started with the introduction of smartphones. Now, look back at 2007. Steve Jobs came about, he introduced the smartphone, but he had literally, like, he had zero idea what's going to be the effect of smartphones on society. Now, we don't only go online, we live online, we breathe online, we have online in our pockets at any given moment. So what it means in numbers is, can you imagine that consumers are checking their phones 150 times a day? They're spending around three hours each day on their phones. No wonder people don't have time to work, right? I mean, so what are consumers actually doing during that time? Well, they're doing the things that are personal. So they might be texting their friend, they might be popping in a work email, you know, while standing in the queue for something, or they might be posting pictures from their vacation time on the Bermuda just to make their friends jealous. The thing is, these are all personal moments. These are moments when people are not interested in being engaged with brands. It's very likely because consumers are in control and if they see your brand message and find it irrelevant, what's gonna happen is they are gonna ignore you for eternity, right? So, still, there is, there is light in the end of the tunnel. There are moments when consumers are actively looking to be influenced by brands. This happens uh, for a reason, of course, and these are the types of moments you should be looking out for. You should be prepared for those type of moments. At Google, we call this the micro moments. So whenever a consumer turns to a device, tries to look up information about something, or learn something new, that's considered to be a micro moment. We divide those into four different moments. The I want to know, I want to go, I want to do, and I want to buy moments. All of these are filled in with intent, context, and immediacy. So for you as an advertiser, you have to understand what your consumers are trying to do. That's their intent. You have to understand what situation your consumer is in, their context. And you really have to be aware that you have to do that immediately when this need appears. So for you to be useful in the micro moments world, you have to understand the content and the context and intent of your consumers. As I said, we've identified four moments. Just because of the fact that millions of interactions are happening each day, and it's really hard for you as an advertiser to understand where do you actually start. But now that you're prepared for the micro moments world, we'd like to share with you these four major topics which actually cover the whole range of needs consumers have. The first one is the I want to know. It's when the consumer turns to a device to look for new information or something he wants to learn. Useful information is crucial in this moment. The next one is the I want to go. This is when a consumer already decided to go to your shop. Your physical location is of an essence. You have to make it visible so that, the, so that your consumer comes to exactly this place. The next one is the I want to do moment. This is all about action, all about what a consumer wants to do or wants to learn how to do. Therefore, you need to provide the right information and useful answers to their questions. And the last one, of course, the big one for you is the I want to buy moment. You shouldn't be only concentrating on this one, you know. What I'm trying to tell you is you should be present across all of the different moments. But of course, this one plays a major part. This is when, where you can influence your consumers to choose your brand over the brand of your competitors. Therefore, providing the right information at the right time is of an essence. So, how do you reach your customers in the moments that matter? There's, of course, numerous ways, but we at Google spend enough time collecting data and insights, and we summarize that into four major steps. Today, I'm gonna talk all about how to be there, be useful, be quick, and then connect the dots. I'm gonna start off with how to be there. Being there means different things, and it's especially important for marketeers. It means when you have your product in a supermarket or when you have your share of voice on TV. These are the types of metrics consumers are looking at to evaluate how present your brand is. But are you considering mobile where millions of interactions are actually happening every day? Is your strategy the same as for your other channels or the time you dedicate to them? Well, they actually should be because whenever somebody picks up their phone, they're there to learn, do, find, or buy something. And you need to be there as a brand. 
Now, don't just listen to my words. Look at the numbers. One in three customers are actually choosing a brand other than the one they were looking for just because they were provided with information at the right moment. Now, showing up is important and it puts your brand in the game to be chosen, not just seen. Let's dig in deeper into a case study by a Red Roof Hotel. It's uh, one of my favorite examples because of the fact that this brand managed to create their marketing strategy around context, intent, and immediacy, as I mentioned previously. So, the management of Red Roof analyzed that around 90,000 people were stranded in airports because of, flight <clears throat> Sorry, because of flight cancellations. What their marketing team did is they managed to create a system in which they tracked in real time when flights were delayed. After that, they delivered targeted ads to consumers in the airport, promoting the uh, hotels near the airport. What actually happened is while this campaign started and ran for a couple of weeks, they had a 300% increase in bookings. Okay, uh, the next one is more about uh, usefulness and information you provide to your consumers. I would say this is the most important part and it contains information about a lot of the special moments. So, let's look at what's important for your consumers. First of all, 51% of your consumers or smartphone users are going to choose a brand other than the one they intended to just because information provided was very useful to them. And consider this, 73% of consumers are saying that it's important to regularly receive important information from advertisers and that's how they form their choice of a brand. Now, being there with useful information is important but not being there with information or information that consumers find unuseful is even worse. It might even happen that the brand is never going to be considered in the future by this consumer. I'm going to dig deeper into the four moments I've mentioned before, starting off with the I want to know moments. Now, I want to know, as I said, is all about questions like how can I eat healthier, what should I consider before buying a new house or a new car. This is something you have to remember and these are the moments where you have to introduce useful information and not just do the hard sell. 69% of consumers are saying that they're more likely to buy from companies whose mobile site or app is helping them to find answers easily. So our advice to you here is to be actionable, create snackable and educational content instead of trying to sell something at this particular moment. We'll move on with a practical example with the I want to go moment. As I've said, this is where physical location is of an essence. So Argos is a very popular brand in the UK. They've been present there for 30 years, doing a great job. But three years ago, their management decided to implement digital and mobile as part of their strategy. So what they did is they put up all of their inventory online and they created targeted local inventory ads by showing uh, to consumers who were near their shops and showing them information about availability of stock. This way, when somebody sees kitchen appliance in an Argus ad, they can go online, book it, come after work and pick it up. For Argus, this wor worked really good. So 38% of, uh, of their total sales were online, first of all, and 48% increase in their e-commerce year over year. So the I want to do moment is all about action. Now, this moment starts with a question. It starts with how to, how to fix my bike, how to cook this very nice recipe. It's all about providing the customers with information to help them do something or help them achieve something. And video content works very good at this particular moment because it provides your consumers with an option to learn on their own pace with step-by-step -step examples and do something themselves. That's why our action here for you is to create instructional content and put it on your website because it actually has a huge effect on what your consumers are going to do. As I've said, 48% of smartphone users are more likely to buy from a company whose mobile site or app provides instructional video content. And the last one, of course, the last big moment is all about the purchase. This is where you have to really be present only to influence which brand is going to be chosen in the end. I insurance is a great example because they've done a really, really great job across the whole consumer journey, but they're still doing even better at this particular moment. 
they've collected feedback from their consumers. All of them told them, okay, your mobile website is great, but sometimes I want to talk to a real person. What issuers did, they implemented the click to call ads within their advertising and allowed consumers to engage in a way they wanted. So eventually what happened was, first of all, 300% increase in their traffic to their mobile site. And second, they allowed consumers to do what they really wanted and felt comfortable with. All right, so we analyzed strategy of how to be there and be useful for your consumers. But it's really important to understand that you should take those advices in consideration, but being quick is of an essence because consumers nowadays have zero patience for slow or clumsy websites. And that's true. Every consumer nowadays wants to use a mobile, ex to have a mobile experience at a lightning speed. Of course, mobile is the reason for that. And it doesn't matter whether a consumer goes online to look up your physical location or to research about your product or service. He wants to do something in a fast manner and he was, wants to finish fast as well. So, don't just take my words for granted. We should consider the uh, numbers as well. 29% of your consumers are saying that they would switch off to another website or an app if it loads too slowly. Now, what's too slowly is, for example, the 40% of people who say that if it takes more than three seconds, they're gonna abandon this website. And what's even worse, imagine these people left your website, but one in five of those consumers is never gonna return to that website afterwards. So you just lost that consumer for life. It's not that hard to optimize. So now I would like to do something practical as well. I would like you to take out your smartphones. Please take out your smartphones if you are carrying one with you. And I would like you to do the following. Load your website and load your competitor's website. Count the seconds it takes to load each. I'll give you 30 seconds to do that. Put your hands up when you're ready. All right, I see two websites loaded really quickly there. <laughs> Some people in the back, all right. I hope the issue is the internet connection here. Um, all right, so that's something Google has also thought about, you know, Google Fiber project and so on. Um, not something that's gonna happen soon here, but what I would like you to, you know, take from this exercise is just to consider how much time does it really take you to load this page. And for those of you who are lucky enough to have it load faster than your competitors, great. But, but for the rest of the people, I would like to provide this uh, actionable uh, steps for you to improve the performance and actually cover the need for speed of your consumers. These steps include uh, three different uh, factors which are eliminating, st <coughs> eliminating steps anticipating needs, and loading light lightning. Elim eliminating steps, or basically, how much time does it take me to do what you want from me? So basically, how much time should I, how many steps do I need to take to actually finish my purchase? If I'm on step two from out of six, oh, you just lost me, I'm not gonna do that much, you know? Uh, and actually, 67% of consumers are saying that if it takes too many steps to finish a purchase or get their desired information, they're really likely to abandon that website or a mobile app. Therefore, my advice to you is to do this, the following things. First, start with the end goal in mind. Think about what's the reason for you to create a mobile website or an app. Is it to drive engagement? Is it to drive sales or to collect leads? Put that call to action in the front, in the most visible position on your website and have all secondary actions in menus. Those are important for consumers who are just landing on your page. The second is about designing efficient forms using analytics and data about helping your consumers preview information or only few information that's needed. Why waste time on such a thing when they can spend their time buying stuff, right? And the last one is about providing alternatives to finish up a transaction. You need to have as many ways as possible, credit cards, debit cards, PayPal, and everything else you can remind yourself of 
To allow your consumers to send you money, isn't that the point, right? I mean, you want to do that easy for them and get the money as fast as you can. I'm gonna show you a good example of Rulala. Rulala is a French online retailer selling private brands uh, for a limited time. So it's really of an essence for a consumer to be able to buy something quick on their website. Otherwise, someone else might buy it in the meanwhile. Rulala actually understood that mobile is super important for them. And they found out from their analytics that 40% of their mobile app users were on Android. So what they did is they implemented within their app a Google Wallet payment system and also cut down the steps to only two. Now, consumers were able to do what they wanted the most. They were able to shop nice French retail brands and not waste time filling in forms. After this campaign, Rulala had thousands of app downloads and a 200% increase of mobile app traffic. The second point in being quick is all about anticipating needs and knowing what your consumers want before they actually want it. Now, consider this. You have to put the one call to action in the front in order to provide your users with the option to finish up this particular transaction as fast as possible. Also, consider the fact that 61% of users are saying that they would they are likely to choose from a company that provide, that customizes information to their particular location. And that's a thing you can make use of and play around. You can use the GPS location uh, possibilities on smartphones and target your messages towards a particular location. The last one is about using past behavior, uh, looking at your analytics and so on, to direct the customer to the relevant page. What if he just left your website and returned afterwards? Is he gonna have to fill in all the forms again? Or can he just continue from the previous step? A great example in a company I love is Virgin Airlines. So Virgin America did what they had to do. L listened to their consumers and understood what is actually the thing they want to do. It's all about booking a flight. And that's why they put one call to action to the, on their app. Book a flight. This cut down the time to uh, make a purchase twice and made life much easier for their consumers. The last one is all about loading like lightning. Now, you might have a great website with super nice user experience, but if it takes time to load, people are just gonna abandon it. And as I, as I said before, 40% are likely to leave within three seconds, and 47% consider that the page should load within two seconds or less. Just look at your website, try to optimize your performance as much as you can. Walmart, which is a huge wholesaler, number one in the world in the wholesaling business, had a lot of issues with their website. It was loading for 7.2 seconds. So for such a big company, this was a disaster. Once they cut down the time to 2.9 seconds, you know what happened? For every second of time they cut, they gained up to 2% conversions. It's as easy as that. And of course, after you're there, and after you've collected all the information to become more useful for your consumers, and after you've optimized your website to become quicker and easier to use, it's all about how you connect all of this information and how you actually track it. You should consider the fact that there, all, of it, all, all of the channels are important and matter. We don't say we're better than someone else, but mobile phones are the thing that drive digital nowadays. They're the connection between offline and online. There are actions, valuable actions happening for you on mobile phones that you should consider tracking, such as calls, or researching a location before entering your shop. And this is one of the points here. The micro moments have fragmented the consumer journey. More and more people are using several devices to make an informed decision of what to buy. Around 87% of people are actually researching online before entering your shop, and even when they're in your shop, they're still on their phones looking up better offers somewhere else. That's why we're recommending to do two things. Measuring across screens, having in mind that activities are happening across different devices, smartphones, tablets, desktop, and all around again. You can also consider measuring valuable actions, such as getting phone calls from your phone, phone calls which came from your ads, for example. And the last one, to not only concentrate on app installs when you're promoting your apps. Measuring a cross-channel is an important one. As I said, a lot of people are doing research before actually entering a shop. And you should consider that 
Uh, you should also count, for example, you can measure how many people visited, visited the page with your address information and connect that to how many people came to your shop during that particular day. This is how can you, for example, attribute success to an online advertising. Here at Google, we actually care about you being successful in the micro moments world. That's why we've set up this micro moments checklist. And overall, it's all about being there, providing information at any given stage of the consumer journey. This information has to be useful, otherwise you're gonna lose the moment for your customers. And at the same time, you have to provide it quick and not lose the sense of immediacy. Now, with some practical examples, Peter is gonna continue and show you how people would actually use this information. All right. I'll just bring back this slide. I saw a lot of people wanted to take a photo. Wow, I sip. Everyone ready? I see one more, two more photos being taken. Do you want me in the, in the photo? <laughs> All right, let's move to some uh, practical examples. Actually, we've prepared two of these for you. There is a company called Recreational Equipment Incorporated. I'm not gonna say the name every time. They call themselves Ray. And they've really learned how to connect the dots. So Ray knows how to be there, how to be useful, and how to be quick. They know how to really be there for their customer. They have actually analyzed what people need, and they've understood that people want to keep the local shopping experience. They're not that interested when searching for recreational equipment. They're not that interested to buy online. Why? Think about it. If you've been buying a bike for yourself, would you buy a bike online? If you know what it is, most likely yes, but it's much more probable that you would want to go there and check it yourself. This is what Ray has understood. They understand that people want to touch the fabric of the tent. They understand that people want to have a hold of the bike, do a round trip around the shop. Probably, if, I'm not sure if uh, I've seen a shop like that here in Sofia, but for example, in Austria, they had a, a store where you actually have a climbing wall and you can actually try it. This, only this way you can actually have this local shopping experience. Through a practical example, consider this guy. He's walking his dog and he's thinking, hmm, the warmer months are finally here. Probably this applies also to, to Bulgaria. In Dublin, we don't have that success, that really nice experience, but here it's starting to get warmer. And this person is thinking, it's gonna be much faster and much more enjoyable if I walk my dog with a bike. But I currently don't have a bike because it broke last year. So I need to go back to the store and buy one. Now, Google is a unique partner here for Ray because in the US, there is a feature, Alex also mentioned it in, for the UK, for Argos, where the company can actually provide users with their local inventory. This means that when this person does the logical step, obviously, Google it, and check for bikes, check for touring bikes, check for road bikes, this person is gonna discover information about particular bikes. It's very probable that Ray will show up. They've made sure that they show up. And this is about context. They're showing up for this person because there is local inventory. They're showing up because there is actually a product available close by. So what is, this gonna, what is this person gonna do? He's gonna do what Ray loves. Ray loves when somebody walks in the store holding their phone and saying, I want this bike. I want this particular bike. I might be interested in other ones, but show me this bike and I wanna understand more about it. This has helped Ray be really quick. I mean, just imagine this experience in three steps. This could take one hour for the person to just go to the store. Obviously here we don't see the dog, so probably he went home to leave the dog. But it really allows him to be quick and it really enables the store to have a partnership with him. Because it's one thing if a person goes there and says, I want a bike. Oh, that's gonna take a while. We have a lot of bikes. We have different bikes, different tires, different grips. What do you need it for? But if the person comes and says, I want this specific model, sorry, I'm not an expert, I don't have anything like, I can't actually cite a specific model, if, but if he says, I want this brand and this model, show it to me, then you're having a partnership, you're having an educated conversation with this person because this person has all the information in his pocket. And only through this, 
can people go back to what they like to do? They can go back in the nature and not sit in the store for one hour or go around different stores. You know how much time that takes. They can go there, say, I, this is the bike I want. I actually like it. You persuaded me very quickly because I was already ready to convert. And they can go back outside, ride the bike. What you can do and what your local florist can do or what your business, uh, the, the owner of the restaurant that I mentioned can do, they can go back to what they do best, running the business. They don't need to worry anymore about this customer. Now, I wrote also another example. Fingers crossed it's going to work, but I've made sure that it will. And with this one, I want to bring across two points. First point is there are tools out there, Google providing a lot of them, but in particular this one, that any business can use to be online. Any business, practically any business, can be there online. Now, with this example, I also want to bring across a second point. For many of you, and as well for me, the business world provides a very hectic lifestyle. But I hope this video is going to bring you back to the carefree days of the childhood. Why tree houses? Why not tree houses? <laughs> Everybody loves a tree house. I'm James McCarthy. I'm a tree house brother. I'm Ryan McCarthy. I'm the other tree house brother. Yeah, we're fourth generation carpenters. My father was a carpenter. His grandfather was a carpenter. My dad was always coming home smelling like sawdust. They were good kids. They didn't give me any trouble. I think we only went to the police station twice. <laughs> <laughs> Before my kids were even born, we knew that we were going to build a treehouse. We had a great time doing it, realized it's something that we were good at doing, and it just became more than that. As it did, we started taking it more seriously. He called me up one day and said, Brian, Brian, something's going to happen with these treehouses. we got to get in. we got to be the guys in the area that people are going to call for treehouses. At first, it was a very casual thing. Treehouse Brothers sounds really good. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> Within one week of being on Google AdWords, we started getting our first calls. Just really snowballed from there. We have to get some more brothers. Yeah. <laughs> it's our only form of advertising. It's all about the web. It's all about getting out there. If you're not, you're left behind. That's what gets me hyped up about work, is the opportunity to be creative and do something that we haven't done before or that anybody's ever done before. It could be anything you want up in the treehouse. You know, I think it's the place where your imagination can go. So keeping this in mind, I hope you felt inspired by our presentation. I would like to invite also Alex on the stage. Um, we have some time for Q&A. That was so interesting. I think it's just so amazing that the two of you are here, that people actually have the opportunity to ask questions directly to people working at Google. So, um, so let's, just, uh, yeah, let's just start because uh, I'm sure that there is going to be a lot of questions. So who's going to be first? Okay. All right. You, you have a question? I prefer to ask Google itself, so. <laughs> hey, Alex, how is it to work at Google? Okay, working in Google has been great for the last one year. Uh, I've seen a lot of interesting people. Everybody is very competitive, but at the same time, everybody wants to help each other. So it's really like a healthy competition. And uh, what's your experience at Google? Pretty much the same. By the way, really, if you guys are interested, Google is starting to look towards the Bulgarian market, so a lot of interesting positions would come up, I believe, in the next few years. It's worth the check, but we are in Dublin. We are in Dublin. Uh, okay, maybe I have a question, like if yes. no one else has. Um, so I think that you, you did an amazing job at you know, painting a picture that all the Google products are not for like really um, high-tech companies, but it's for regular folks, you know, building tree houses. Um, you work in particular with the Eastern European market. So how would you approach a business owner that has no clue about how the whole thing works? You know, how would you help him to get started with your products? Uh, all right, Google has a great initiative. It's called Empowering Europe with Digital. Uh, a lot of things were done over countries such as uh, Germany, France, Spain. Spain was very successful. Uh, what it actually uh, consisted of was, um, it was first of all initiated by the fact that there wasn't enough digital knowledge in the market. People were not exactly, were not prepared to understand what they were pitched. So the first thing that, that had to be done was educate the market, 
Google implemented this uh, in Spain, called, called it Activate Gut. A lot of the young people who are now unemployed, that's what's happening during the crisis in Spain, and educated them in digital, over one million people. You can imagine how that influenced the whole market. And eventually these people who were unaware before started working with businesses who were unaware as well. Step by step, you just ask business questions. It doesn't really matter if it's a question regarding advertising. Usually it isn't when I'm starting to talk with people. I'm really trying to understand what their business is about because the means you're using can differ from business to business, even if they're in the same vertical. And therefore, it's not about educating them about how to do their business. It's about how to empower them to do their business with our tools as well. So practically, you act like uh, you know, like like a friend you know, that's gonna help them under that you would understand what they're trying to do, and then you're gonna do the heavy lifting and figure out how Google can help them. Exactly. That's why we have a free gym at Google. We <laughs> we push weights all the time. Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> do you even? I don't. Uh, that's why. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the idea. Empower uh, local businesses, small and medium businesses to do uh, much better with their business. And especially export. That's a big thing that I want to push in Bulgaria. That's really great. We still have a time for a question. Like, you know. Oh my god, there are two questions. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't take all the credits that I inspired people, but uh, there you go. Hi. Um, I'm wondering about the load speeds. You had some statistics on it. Is it surveys, something that people set, or is it taken from Google Analytics information or something else like actual um, real world um, data, not just things that people claim to like or not like because they often don't know what they like? All right. About which one in particular? It's just the um, beginning the of the being quick section. The load speeds, like um, I think it that was seventy-four percent for two seconds, mm -hmm. and then something with three seconds, but I forgot. Uh, well, th all the information in statistics is based on the consumer surveys. You know, a lot of people were interviewed personally to get that information. Obviously, there's. Uh, accounts, uh, there's analytics, but Google doesn't have that information and can't actually analyze it, you know, that's not how we do things. Uh, that's why it's consumers' opinions, if you may take it as that. Okay, thanks. There is an addition on aggregation, so if you have enabled Google to crawl your website, in certain scenarios you, will, you might also be okay to be included in this type of surveys. And this type of this would mean, for example, if you're using the Google Mobile Checker, if you're familiar with it, that type of information is publicly available. So once you aggregate it, you come up with numbers like this. All right, another question coming from here. Hi guys. Hi, Dimitri. Uh, one, yeah, one quick one. Hi, Alex. Uh, uh, you were talking about catching the moments when people are doing things on the um, sales funnel. Uh, and I know here in Bulgaria we don't have Google Shopping and we don't have Google Wallet. Uh, and do you have any suggestions or tools how we can actually catch those customers on a local level? Because we have customers in the US and I know how we can catch people, for example, in Las Vegas who are searching for a product or something and we can place them on that. that um, for example, that sneaker is in the store near them. And here in Bulgaria, I think here in Eastern Europe, although we don't have such tools, uh, any other ways to catch those guys on a local level? I mean, it has to be simple, right? US is already advanced, and you can look towards US just to get information about what's going to happen afterwards, which is a nice way of you know, structuring your business and preparing for the future. What you can do is Bulgaria is really basic things like you know, register, Google my business, you know, have your address in maps, because people, even if you don't have ads serving for people around you, they are going to maps looking for businesses. And the businesses that are showing up are probably the ones they would consider. You don't have to promote that even. It's not even necessary for you to put money in that, right? It's for free. Um, other things you can consider, I mean, the simple funnel, it works with a lot of different, um, a lot of different tools, you know, mainly, of course, uh, if you are considering advertising with AdWords, basically if you start from the intent phase when a person considers doing something, you know, just follow the track, track the micro moments and don't only brand yourself with keywords, or, you know, regarding concretely to your product or concretely to your service or brand name, you know, think more broadly than that, you know, what type of queries are people making, 
before they actually consider buying this particular per, you know, product, service, and so on. And by doing this, you can even deviate from your competitors. You can you know, position yourself on keywords that are much cheaper than the main mainstream ones that usually most of the people are using. And you can consider that this way you're going to influence uh, the moment when a person considers the brand. You know, he's going to associate, associate your brand with much more things than just this product or service. Um, concretely, there is a lot of tools we, we can talk about, but you know, obviously shopping is not available, local inventory ads is not available, but we Bulgarians are smart people, we always find the ways around, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this shouldn't be an issue for you guys. You can do much better even without those tools. Well, we'll see when it comes actually to market, but obviously, you know, just read a bit more about the tools. We don't want to sell them right now, it's not why we're here. Um, yeah, well. That's All right, it. thank you so much to both of you. Just Thank give you. a big round of applause again.